A R E podcast episode number fifty one. Welcome to the Welcome to the A R E podcast. A R E podcast, where it's all about encouraging and inspiring you today, so you can fulfill your dream of becoming a licensed architect tomorrow. And now your host, David Doucet. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the. ARE podcast. Today we have a micro podcast for you. Eric, what's our topic for the day? Well, this one came about because um, I received a call this week from uh, somebody who failed uh, PJM. And it was, a, it was a story that I've heard over and over and over again. They said, I don't understand. I've, you know, I, I read through all these materials. I read the entire architect's handbook of prof- professional practice. I read this book, that book, that book. Is your guide any different? And it leads me to the topic of the day, which is you're not failing from the content. In other words, they did everything right, right? They studied all the, all the re- recommended resources, and yet they still didn't pass, and they were feeling very frustrated. And this is a very common story. And so what I explained to them was that it's not the content that's the issue. It's usually one of five reasons. And those five reasons tend to be you're overthinking the question. You're second guessing the question. You're not reading the question correctly and missing out on clues. You're not trusting the question. And then there's always, of course, just time management, right? You, you're not doing any of those things, but you just run out of time. That tends to be, you know, those five things tend to be 95% of the time why people fail. It's very rarely because they don't understand what project delivery methods are. Okay. So we have overthinking, second guessing, not reading not trusting, and time management, right? We have all five, right? Um, Which we know to be true because we've spent uh, a few years coaching candidates through all of these. What do you say to the candidate who says, yeah, but that doesn't apply to me? (laughs) Well, usually what I'll do with them is is, uh, on one of our free calls that they can schedule from the website, I'll walk them through some questions and I'll listen to how they think. You know, I'll tell them to think out loud. And you'll hear the overthinking. It, it'll be loud as a, you know, loud as a bell. Uh, but, you know, and then when I pointed out to them of, you know, well, you, you started wondering about this and wondering about that and wondering about all these things that weren't in the question. Why did you do that? Well, yeah, because NCARB's out to get me. Or NCARB's, you know, every question is a trick. Well, that gets into the not trusting the question, not trusting NCARB. So, you know, that's why it's usually some combination of, of all five, five of these usually. And, and, and also why our materials really stand out differently from everybody else, because uh, they're specifically written to help you stop overthinking and focus on improving your mindset so you can think like an architect. Of these five, what would you say, and, and maybe there isn't one that sticks out necessarily alone, because as you said, there, a lot of them are related. Um, again, overthinking over overthinking, a uh, second guessing, not reading, not trusting, and time management. Those are the five. And we are seeing, you know, a lot of candidates have a combination of those. Um, what would you say of that list, Eric, is like the most uh, common hands down? Is there one? Well, I probably technically the most common is just straight up overthinking. And And the irony is, is that the more experienced you are, the more you're going to overthink these questions because you know too much, you, you know, enough to be dangerous. Uh, You know, we, we have, we have a a person in our uh, group coaching now who's, is he 68 or 69 years old? I don't remember. He, I think he had a birthday. So I think he's 69. And uh, there's no reason on earth why he shouldn't be passing these, these tests, but every question when he reads it, the answer is, well, that depends. What about this? And what about that? They know too much to be dangerous. So the more experience you have, the more you'll tend to overthink. And how, how do we address that? Because uh, a lot of times these questions can be framed in our minds of the answer of, well, that depends. Like I need more information or that depends. I'm not exactly sure what they're talking about or that depends. How do we, how do we stop doing that? The easiest way is just to exert a little bit of self-discipline, right? If you find that you're reading the question and then wondering about it, or if you find that you're reading the question and then, and then feeling like, well, I need more information, 
Well, what your brain is going to do is your brain is going to start filling in the gaps in, in that perceived missing information. And what you need to do is kind of restrain yourself and just focus on the question. This is what we do in the coaching every week, right? We kind of go through questions and, and say, well, see that one word, that one word was really all you need to answer it, but you kind of glossed over it. It specifically said house and you just assumed it meant building, but house in this case meant, you know, lightweight building, probably wood frame construction, probably one or two stories at most, right? You can defer all that just from, just from the word house. But if you're just glossing over the clues, you're not, you're going to miss that. And you're going to be left thinking, well, what about this? And what about that? So really, if you find that you're asking questions after reading the question, stop yourself, remind yourself that you're overthinking, and then just go back to the straightforwardness of the question. You mentioned uh, self-discipline. I want to talk about that for a second, because on our list of five that we have here, one of them is second guessing. And that is where we need self-discipline uh, the most, I think. And second guessing seems to be the bane of a lot of candidates. We see it in our coaching program, even though we stress over and over and over again, stop changing your answers. Um, People do it, and and you've talked to many who have uh, taken the same division multiple times, and they continue to do worse each time. Why is that? Yeah, they're they're um, I we you and I observed this years ago, right? Uh, when people would go in for retakes, and their score report uh, would show that their score got worse. They they actually you know um, went down. And that's usually when they, end up, when they end up calling us, right? I took PPD three times, each score got worse. What am I doing wrong? Can you guys help? That's usually when we end up meeting, meeting you. Uh, but NCARB has backed this up with data now. They've seen that the pass rates on the first time attempt are higher than on the retakes. So people do worse on the retakes. Why? Because they're going in and essentially throwing out the baby with the bathwater. They're essentially going in and saying, well, last time I failed, so therefore everything I know is wrong, everything I'm doing is wrong, so they just start changing answers, right? And if you do that, anecdotally, I can tell you, if you do that, your score is going to get worse. You're probably not that far from passing as you think, and changing up everything is not the answer. Really just doing a better job at not overthinking, managing your time, and reading the question for the clues is really all you'll need to make the difference between a fail and a pass. And we've seen that work in our coaching program because we have specifically told clients just before they're getting ready for their second or third attempt, don't change answers. When you have your exam on Saturday, don't change. Like When you're done and you have 30 minutes left, don't go back through and change answers. And we've had people successfully do that, not change the answers, uh, even though they admitted to still wanting to. Yeah, yeah um, they want and, to. <laughs> and, and they've passed. Um, it, it's a hard one to measure, um, but it's, it's definitely a, a thing They just, I just don't think anything good can come from changing your answers. And this goes back to, I think, basic, basic test taking 101 from, you know, when we were doing SATs back in the day, just changing answers just never seems to work. It's now that's different. We're talking something different than maybe, going back over and reviewing some things, that's a little different, but in the it's still in that same, it's in that same danger zone of changing answers. Cause usually as we know, our first answer is correct or the one most likely to be correct. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, there's really two types of second guessing. They're the, they're second guessing on the retakes. You're going in, well, I've seen questions like this before in the test. So therefore I'm going to, I'm going to approach it differently. But then there's also the just pure second guessing of you filled out the answers, you have 10 minutes left at the end of the test, and you're reviewing your answers, and you're changing B to C. It, it's, and, it's frantic. Like it, it, yes. I, and, and I think we've probably all been guilty of it at some point. Um, there's this there's anxiety takes over. Uh, we become a little less rational, right? We see the clock is ticking, and we just literally start changing willy-nilly. Yeah, and obviously we have no we have no way to have hard data of if they would have passed if they kept the answers or not. Obviously, but I can tell you what we do have data on is the people that change answers at the last minute as they have you know in the, in their last ten minutes 
they tend to fail. And the people that stuck to their guns and stuck to their answers, even though they reviewed them, tend to pass. So uh, really, you only want to change an answer if you if when you reread the question, you discover something you missed. Oh, I didn't see it said horse or whatever. I didn't see that it said, you know, that it was a hospital. Uh, so, OK, that'll cause me to change my answer. But otherwise, changing your answers is usually a bad thing. And the other one I want to talk about here is not trusting. Uh, we deal a lot uh, with this, and it's a it's a specific type of candidate. Uh, candidate, uh, tell me, you know, what is it about not trusting? What exactly is it, and why should I be aware? Because uh, my sense is some of, and if you might recognize this as the listener, um, you might be in that not trusting category, but you would never consider yourself in that not trusting category. Yeah, that's that's kind of the funniest thing about them. Uh, it, here's how it starts. They usually uh, are they're in the ARE forum way too much, and they read all the stories of how oh, NCARB's out to get you, and every question is a trick question. Be careful, everybody. And they start to believe that, and then they go in and then they fail. <laughs> and then on their retake, they fail again because they didn't really fix their mindset, so they didn't you know, uh, change anything. And then they start to really believe it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy it's very strange and they stand out on they stand out on the phone calls more than anything because they're the ones that go well you know how every question's a trick question right you know how and carbs out to screw me right like they 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 play the victim very well and i'm sure they also get sympathy at the office playing the victim so they're not even aware that they're doing it but you have really have to remove yourself from the equation and carbs not out to trick anybody they're really just nerdy architects that like testing people and and as a result, the questions are boringly straightforward, like surprisingly, boringly, depressingly straightforward. And once you kind of get your paranoia out of the way, you start to see that the questions are much easier than you gave them credit for. Not trusting is a tricky one. Um, it, it usually takes some time to overcome that. We see that in our own coaching, uh, even as much as you know, we, we hit our candidates over the head with the not trusting. We'll, st we'll still see it, Eric. I, I see it oftentimes in the chat when you're doing, you know, asking questions. We'll see exactly the not trusting comments come, even though they've, you know, attended uh, several weeks of our calls. Um, so it takes a little time to recognize it, and it takes a little time to, to work it out of your system. But it's uh, hugely important because if you are in the not trusting category, it will make your journey um, very long and painful. Absolutely. All right. I think um, let me just wrap up. So the five that Eric and I, you just you took my list away. There we go. The, the five that we have overthinking, second guessing, not reading, not trusting and time management. Uh, those are five reasons that we know for sure people why people are failing and of course, many have uh, multiple of those. So if you recognize yourself, in any of those, the the awareness, the recognition is the first step, right? And then then what do you do to uh, you know overcome those things? So, on behalf of Eric, my name is David, and we will see you guys in the next ARE podcast. Thanks, Thanks for listening to the ARE podcast. ARE podcast. Be sure to visit architectexamprep.com and check out our other podcast episodes, video tips, and the ARE blog. Remember to plan, practice, and pass.